In today's video, we're going to restore a casting as well as take you on the journey on how we acquired this casting. You see we're pulling up to an antique mall, so let the journey begin. Now these bags of cars, they were only $5, but had nothing that interested me. Now this one caught my eye, but they wanted way too much for it. And after all that walking, this is the only thing we walked out with. Unfortunately, at these antique malls, you're going to run into a couple different scenarios. Either they're way too expensive, or they're just modern day cars that they're trying to pawn off as antiques. This one was a little unique, so I picked it up for the $8. I searched on eBay. I didn't find a lot of them out there. Zero in the U.S. If I would have taken my time and actually inspected this car, I may not have purchased it. As you saw in that shot, the entire rear bumper is missing. It's just broken off. This is a metal bodied car, but with a plastic base. Aside from that flaw, it's complete, minus the passenger. Now this particular casting came with a passenger that would eject. After a little bit of research, it appears that Husky was bought out by Corgi Jr. at some point. So this could be a Corgi. And I love castings with rubber tires, so I guess it's a win. Now this is a modern day Hot Wheels Aston Martin, and the bumper looked relatively close from the pictures I saw on eBay. So we're gonna drill it apart and see if we can morph these two together. And I have a ton of this casting, so there's no loss. It's got a plastic base, so that's perfect. Now we're gonna chuck the Husky in there. If you'll notice, one of these tabs are broken as well in the front. So the base is obviously not in great shape, but we're still going to try to keep it as original as possible. Next, we're going to take out the interior, which has our little guy in there, the driver, and then the glass just falls out. Now the glass I thought was damaged. See those notches? That's the notch for the roof. So no damage there, all is well. Now we're just kind of mocking up that Hot Wheels chassis. Now, I may have been able to use this entire chassis, but I'm not going to because we have to fit the guy in there and there's other things. And you can see from the mock-up, the rear bumper looks pretty good. So we're gonna cut off the back half of the Hot Wheels. Just using our little saw, we're gonna take the wheels and tires off the Husky. They just kind of snap out. Line it up where we need to cut. Then we'll go ahead and put a mark with the marker. And we're gonna cut that section off as well. After that, we're going to set the Husky base back in the body and then fit the rear portion of the Hot Wheels onto the Husky. Now, it takes a little bit of grinding. We got it all fit. And you'll notice that we actually taped down the Husky chassis so we know it's in the right place. Go ahead and set the rear of the Hot Wheels. Dab some super glue in there just to set it in place. And then we actually epoxy it together. It's not coming apart. We'll check the fitment once again. And I'm quite shocked at how well this actually fits. Very satisfied. Now as we see here, the roof has a slight bend in it. We're going to go ahead and tap that out as best we can. We're not going to get it perfect, but we're going to get it close enough. And we're just taking our hammer with a wide punch and lightly tapping. We've got our anvil to back us up. Now here is the body and the roof after we've stripped the paint. Better than most of the Hot Wheels I restore. Next we'll prime the body as well as the roof and the base. Build that joint up with the epoxy to make it harder to tell where we actually joined it. 
and then we painted it gloss black, just parts of it because we're going to chrome it later. We're going to go ahead and clean the interior. If you recall, the roof hatch did not quite close in the beginning. That's mostly due to dirt in that interior. Now here are the wheels. The rubber tires are very hard to get off there. I had to use an X-Acto and kind of pry them off. They're pretty stiff. Now we're going to use some testers chrome paint, which is really more like a silver, and paint the wheels as well as the axles. And the base has the same treatment, and there it is complete. We also paint the interior, the tan leather, we painted the steering wheel, the steering column, the guy, his suit, his hands, his face, hair, everything. And the ejection lever, the same color as the car. It was originally red. We went with the green, which is the same exact green we used on the Jaguar. Now it's time for reassembly. Put our ejection piece in, which is part of the roof, the glass, the interior. And we're going to go ahead and test it out. And there is our lever. You see it matches the car quite well. And now we're going to put the base on. And test it some more. It works. Now I did not paint the inside of the roof. You'll notice it's still the bare casting. That's because I didn't want it to interfere with the ejection. It catches on that little hook and I was afraid painting it would cause problems. And it rolls and it closes. Now you'll notice it does not close all the way. I don't believe they ever did. This is the best that I could get it, but I didn't close it all before. Of course, we got to look at the interior one more time. And now we're complete. You will obviously notice we're going to title this as a restoration, but technically it's a custom because of the bumper, the painted guy, and obviously it's a different color. I did not want to go with the silver because I thought there was too much silver on the car. We would have had the base, the bumpers, and the wheels. And that was a little bit overkill for me. I like a lot of contrast. Also note, we did not paint the headlights, nor the taillights, or any of the other small details. This is painted with testers enamel paint, and it's been drying for three days. It's not completely cured yet. It's dry, but not cured. I can still smell the paint, so that tells me it's not cured. Now once it cures, which hopefully will be in a couple more days, I can do a polish on it, the finer details, and then decide if I need to clear it or not. I don't believe I'm going to need to clear it. I think a polish will be all we actually need on this one. I wanted to go ahead and get this video out. I have a busy weekend and we go on vacation in about a week and a half. So I wasn't sure when I would complete the project. So you're seeing it 99% complete. And remember, this is what we started with. I was almost certain that I had thrown my $8 down the drain. But I think in the end, we made it worthwhile. I think we created some decent content and maybe a couple of tricks. You can take a Hot Wheels and combine it with a Husky and complete your project. The sky's the limit. Just depends on your imagination. Some other things I did not mention in the video, you'll notice I did not drill and tap. These posts are really small and that chassis was cracked in the front. So all we did was dab some super glue on each of the posts and put the body in place and it's attached just fine. And that completes this project. If you haven't already done so, subscribe. Also, you can check us out on Instagram. I typically post sneak peek pictures as well as some behind the scenes photos. If you'd like to be part of the monthly giveaway, go ahead and check the channel out on Patreon. For a pledge as little as a dollar a month, you can be part of the giveaway. And we actually just sent out our last giveaway, which happened to be the Dukes of Hazard custom we did a few months back. I'd like to take this time to thank my top patrons, which are Henry Harkreader, Corbin Toll, Gary Burke, and Hot Wheels Guy. Thanks again, guys. I really appreciate it. If you see any of the tools that we use in this video and you'd like to purchase them for yourself, be sure to check out the links. They're located below the video in the description. I have Amazon links to just about everything we use. And as always, thanks for watching.